بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا يا كريم اللهم إنا نسألك صلاحا في أقوالنا ونسألك صلاحا في أفعالنا ونسألك صلاحا في قلوبنا يا حي يا قيوم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم إني أعوذ بك من المشرك بك شيء ولا أعلم وأستغفرك لما لا أعلم My dear brothers and sisters in Islam and my mothers and fathers in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته O servants of Allah and O children of Adam Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who said لقد كان في يوسف وإخوته آيات للسائلين. All praises belong to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who said that indeed in Yusuf and his brothers were signs for those who ask. We praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We seek. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance and we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and the adverse consequences of our deeds whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees guidance upon then none can misguide him and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees misguidance upon then none can guide him and I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger and praise be upon the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said for Yusuf Nabiullah Ibn Nabiyillah Ibn Nabiyillah Ibn Khalil Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam My dear brothers and sisters and my dear mothers and fathers Wallahi I love you all for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala I love you all for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Personally, I cannot even express my happiness at being here with you all, mashaAllah, tabarakallah, in your wonderful country. I've been here for a few days now, and today marks the last talk in our series, Noble Pursuits, and I can't help but feel a mixture of emotions. Happiness, because I'm still here, but sadness due to the fact that the end is imminent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make my presence with you all a beneficial one Ameen Ameen and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decree my return to be with you all time and time again whilst we are alive Ameen and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us in the hereafter together in goodness Ameen I also extend my heartfelt thanks to the Bigatelli Masjid for their invite and for making this particular program together a reality I thank them for this particular opportunity and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless their efforts I've heard mashallah so many wonderful things about this masjid may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve it in goodness Ameen and accept the efforts of those involved in running this particular masjid and all those that assist them as well Ameen my dear brothers and sisters today I've been blessed to speak about a subject that is very dear to my heart and a topic that is very dear to my heart lessons from Surah Yusuf for this particular Surah 
is one that I have been looking into and researching and a surah that has been continuously amazing me for many many years. I think my journey uh, intimately with the surah began in the year 2006. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me uh, to study this particular surah and blessed me to teach it in many countries around the world. Walillahi alhamd. Uh, and also blessed me to teach it from the outset or the offset of my journey with the surah live uh, on a radio station known as Radio Islam I think in 2006 at the very beginning live for 14 continuous days so it's a surah that I've had a long relationship with and it's a surah as we heard in the ayah that I recited to you at the beginning of our talk a surah that has lessons lessons for those who just ask lessons for those who just ask and for me personally for me personally I think and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that I have gathered from this particular surah at least 1000 lessons subhana rabbi ala at least 1000 lessons and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase for me and us all because this is the reality of the Quran the Quran is a book in which whenever you read it if Allah opens your heart you will learn something new it's not like the other books that we read when we read it and we finish it then there's no point reading it again because we know the contents of the book we've understood the book the Quran is different it's a divine book and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ayat and lessons hidden that our scholars say are the secrets of the ayat there's a manifest and apparent meaning and for those who ponder there are thousands of hidden messages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens to whom he wills through a process known as tadabbur tadabbur and I have a talk online called tadabbur al-Quran which I ask and request each and every one of you in your free time to search for and listen tadabbur al-Quran if you search for it using my name on Google inshallah it will come up it's a short talk a one hour talk in which I introduce uh, this topic of tadabbur and share some examples of tadabbur al-Quran tadabbur al-Quran and inshallah today the lessons that I will share with you is generated from tadabbur al-Quran may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who live by his book and those who die by his book and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Quran a true companion in our lives and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Quran a, an intercessor for us on the day of Qiyamah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal Al Wahid Al Qahar Al Ahad Al Fard Al Samad Al Ladhi Lam Yalid Wa Lam Yulad Wa Lam Yakul Lahu Kufuwan Ahad make our entry into Jannah or our position in Jannah based on this Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us on the day of Qiyamah to read and rise and make the last ayah that we read our place in Jannah Ameen Ameen indeed we should make this dua in earnest in earnest for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the best revelation the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Quran Al-Kareem O servants of Allah and O children of Adam in terms of us learning lessons from Surah Yusuf then one hour can never suffice believe me I have experience and can promise you that one hour can never suffice in covering the lessons from Surah Yusuf and in fact I am convinced that until I pass away may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that when he's pleased with me and when Jannah is my abode I am convinced that I will continue learning from Surah Yusuf every time I read it every time I read it for there's never a time when I read it except that Allah opens for me a new lesson and I become amazed at the Surah and when I finish it I'm excited to start reading it again Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la uh, this Surah cannot be discussed in an hour in fact uh, I don't think if I really applied myself with one lesson from the Surah an hour would suffice but I have packaged for you a couple of lessons and maybe three if we have time for us to 
uh, give due diligence to the title that has been set for us today. And inshallah, as you will appreciate, there will be magnanimous lessons. Bidnillahi ta'ala. Now, before diving into these lessons, uh, I want to share with you some knowledge which is considered pre uh, preliminary knowledge that the scholars of tafsir uh, mention in their books before they enter into the core discussion of the surah. And from them is the discussion surrounding its revelation or if there was a reason behind its revelation. And the scholars of tafsir say that this particular surah does have a reason of revelation. And they say that this surah was revealed when the disbelievers, and there's two versions, some say that it was the idolaters that decided to test the prophecy of the Prophet wasallam, and some say the Jews wanted to test the prophecy of the Prophet wasallam. thus they went to the idolaters and convinced them to go to Muhammad wasallam and ask him about his brother Yusuf. Because they said that if he is indeed a prophet, then he should know about his brother Yusuf alayhi salam. And when he doesn't know about Yusuf alayhi salam, we will expose him as a fraud. So this is what happened. They went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they asked him about Yusuf alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that we reveal to you the best of stories from that which we have revealed in this Qur'an and indeed before this revelation regarding this particular story you are from the unaware you are from the unaware so this particular plot of theirs actually fell on their face for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed them as frauds and, and, and made manifest that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was indeed a prophet for he was not there when the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam plotted to throw him down the bottom of a well. But the story came down and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in sequence mentioned to them lessons and the history regarding Yusuf alayhi salam. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cited this particular story as the best of all stories. Because from beginning to end it deals with the lessons of one prophet. It deals with the lessons and the story and the life of one particular prophet. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, the scholars of tafsir explain to us when it was revealed. They've explained to us why it was revealed and we discussed it. And they've also explained to us when. And they say that this surah was revealed just before migration from Mecca to Medina. When the Muslims were experiencing great turbulence. So they discuss this whole um, topic pertaining to when the surah was revealed. And they say it was revealed when the Muslims were going through great turbulence. It was revealed after the Muslims were sanctioned in the valley of Abi Talib. And Food was diverted from them, as well as medicine, as well as trade, and so on and so forth. So it was a great turbulent time. And then when they got through that difficulty, we know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost Khadija radiallahu anha, a great supporter of his. And he lost Abu Talib, his uncle, another great supporter of his another great supporter of his so this was another turbulent time for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he went to Ta'if and when he went to Ta'if he was stoned he was stoned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this was another turbulent time for him so it was a time when the Muslims were going through great turbulence and it was at this juncture that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to reveal Surah Yusuf 
as a means of ease upon the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as a means of alleviating their difficulty. And we know that this surah deals with the difficulty of a young boy, Yusuf alayhi salam, and the difficulty of an old man, Yaqub alayhi salam, and they were both prophets of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealing to the ummah that look, yes you are going through a turbulent time, but let me ease your difficulty by telling you a story. And we all love to hear stories. And it's a means of ease for us. Let me ease your difficulty by telling you a story of previous prophets, those who came before you. And they were too tested. They were also tested. They were tested so severely. It wasn't a matter of 10 years or 20 years. They were tested for decades. And this is true. Because when Yusuf alayhi salam was abducted, he was around 7 years of age. And when he was reunited with his family, he was in his 50s. He was in his 50s around that particular period. So that was decades of being tested. Yaqub alayhi salam pined for his son for decades. He went through a true test. And Yusuf alayhi salam pined for his parents, his father, for decades as well. And that too was a true test. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving the ummah hope. Thus, the uh, uh, story of Yusuf alayhi salam was revealed. Now, with regards to the lessons that I've packaged for you today, as I said, it's, it is a difficult task. And you can see the passion that I have as I'm discussing the surah. But I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance. And without further ado, I start with the first lesson. And that first lesson... O servants of Allah and O children of Adam deals with the family unit for the story of Yusuf in a great way talks about family cohesion and discusses family cohesion and talks about all the dynamics of a home it talks about the parent child relationship it talks about the child parent relationship it talks about the relationship between siblings as well. And this is what I mean when we talk about family cohesion. It discusses these dynamics and how they should be in terms of efficiency. And if they ascertain the position of efficiency, how amazing the home will be. How amazing the home will be. So the first lesson that I have for you for this evening, and I ask Allah to grant me barakah in time because it might just take all our time, is the family unit the family unit and this is based on many ayat in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and specifically in the surah starting with these ayat that I want to recite for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تَقْصُصْ رُؤْيَاكَ عَلَى إِخْوَتِكَ فَيَكِيدُوا لَكَ كَيْدًا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَيُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَى آلِ يَعْقُوبَ كَمَا أَتَمَّهَا كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم وإسحاق إن ربك عليم حكيم الله سبحانه وتعالى بجن سورة يوسف by telling us that Yusuf عليه السلام saw a dream a dream that confused him and he immediately went to his father 
and relayed this dream to his father. And when he relayed this dream to his father, Yaqub alayhi salam advised his son proactively and told his son, do not relay this dream to your brothers, lest they shall plot against you. Indeed, shaitan is a clear enemy. And then he advised his son and said that this, my dear son, is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete his favor upon you. Just as he completed his favor upon those before you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete his favor upon you and teach you the interpretation of dreams and reveal to you prophethood as taught to us by the scholars of tafsir. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed that favor on the family of Yaqub and upon the forefathers of Yusuf alayhi salam, Ibrahim wa Ishaq. Ibrahim and Ishaq. And he says, indeed, your Lord and your Rabb is all knowledgeable and all wise. I want us to dive into these ayat a little bit to see how Surah Yusuf teaches us about one of the dynamics of the family home and that is parenting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when Yusuf alayhi salam saw this confusing dream, the first person he went to was his father. He didn't go to his siblings. He didn't go to anyone outside of the home. He immediately went to his father. He immediately went to his father. Now, for those who ponder over this, they will realize that a child does not just go to anybody unless there's a relationship present between them. So the fact that Yusuf alayhi salam went to his father from the outset teaches us that Yaqub alayhi salam was already an active and proactive parent. An active and proactive parent. In that he had a relationship with Yusuf alayhi salam before Yusuf alayhi salam saw this dream. He would play with Yusuf alayhi salam and he would advise Yusuf alayhi salam and he would teach Yusuf alayhi salam. Thus Yusuf alayhi salam by default considered his father his hero. Considered his father his hero. You see how we have deduced from Surah Yusuf how, Yusuf, how, the surah, how surah Yusuf teaches us the importance of being proactive parents because Allah tells us he went to his father but Allah gave yourself a brain and he gave myself a brain and he made us live life to understand how children interact with one another if Yusuf went to his father wasn't there an introduction to this to teach us why he went to his father which in turn would teach us how important it is to be a proactive parent and in the first place how Islam teaches us to be a proactive parent this is the first lesson. This is the first lesson. And evidence from this, in terms of Yaqub being an, a proactive parent, is in the way Yaqub alayhi salam spoke to his son after his son revealed to him this particular dream. Yaqub alayhi salam understood from this dream that my father or my child, that my child is going to be amazing. He's going to be amazing. Thus he proactively taught his son. He knew that Allah is going to test the son of mine. So he proactively advised him. And this is another lesson from Surah Yusuf regarding the first dimension that we're discussing. And that is the discussion between parent and child. Immediately a seven-year-old boy, or maybe a six-year-old boy, or maybe a five-year-old boy, Yaqub alayhi salam turned to him and said, Oh my dear son, ensure that you do not reveal this dream to your brothers, lest they shall plot against you. Now, who from amongst us has the guts to teach a six-year-old child or a seven-year-old child a lesson such as this? We would say, you know what? You know what? Shh keep it a secret he's too young he won't understand this child of ours 
won't understand. Inshallah, when he's older, we will teach him then. When he's older, we will teach him then. Many of us are smiling because this is what we say. Our child is too young to understand. Now, we know that we send our children to school when? Around the age of six? Around the age of seven? Right? Yusuf alayhi salam in effect is going to be taken or he, he is going to be taken away from his father at this tender age. When we send our children to school, we are also sending them out of our home at this tender age. We learn from this ayah and these ayat that we need to parent our children before we send them out of the home. Whilst they are four and five and six and three and two, teach them and don't make the colossal mistake of saying they are too young, they will not understand. They will learn what you teach them. And if you don't teach them, somebody else will teach them. And if you don't make them understand, somebody else will make them understand. And Yaqub alayhi salam knew this. Thus he teaches us this lesson of being a proactive parent. That don't wait for somebody else to do your job for you. Rather do your job yourself. They are never too young to learn. Thus he commands his son, don't tell this dream to your brothers. But such a proactive parent he is. He knows that my dear son is so young and I am telling him to be wary of his blood brothers. What would be the situation of this young child of mine? After I tell him not to trust those he has grown up to trust, those who he sees as his protectors, what will be his situation? Thus Yaqub alayhi salam completes the parenting philosophy and goes on to say, Indeed, shaitan is an evil enemy. Subhana rabbi al-a'la. He tells his son in effect that, My dear son, if anything should happen to you, if your brothers might do anything to you, understand, my dear son, it's not their fault. It's the fault of shaitan. Never ever blame them, my dear son. Because it's not their fault. It's the fault of shaitan. Allahu Akbar. He taught his son about shaitan and the evils of shaitan when he was a young boy. He was a young boy. And to prove how magnanimous the parenting of Yaqub alayhi salam was, we know that Yusuf alayhi salam was abducted. So Yusuf alayhi salam grew up in environments other than the environment, the pure environment, the environment of the house of prophethood. He grew up outside of that environment for the rest of his life. The most difficult years of any child's life, being a teenager, he experienced those years in a house of shirk, in a house where there was idolatry, in a house where the people were loose with one another. And we know they were, because the minister's wife herself, she plotted to seduce Yusuf alayhi salam. So imagine what he was seeing growing up. But look at who he was. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he saw him in the third heaven and he had half of all beauty. By Allah, when you read Surah Yusuf and you understand Yusuf alayhi salam, you will see that he was also beautiful internally. That what, if I told you what are the chances of a boy from seven or eight years of his life growing up in a house of shirk, growing up in a house of loose, where there's a house which lacks character. What do you think the end result of this boy will be? What are the chances of this boy being upright? What would you say? What would you say? Would you even give a percentage or would you say no? You'd say no. You'd say no. But Yusuf alayhi salam forget being test, meaning falling prey to idolatry, falling prey to the ill practices of this environment. He grew up in, sub, in, in sublimity, Allahu Akbar. Not once did he ever associate partners with Allah. Not once did he ever lose the character that his father taught him. Why? Because his father did a grand job teaching him the university of life. Remember we discussed this during our first lecture. Taught him the university of life at the time when he deserved to be taught. He didn't say he's too young, let me teach him tomorrow. He's too young, let me teach him when he's 10 years old. 
after he spends three years out of my home in the school with friends that could pollute his understanding with teachers that may pollute his understanding with environments that may pollute his understanding no he taught him from the outset and thus when yusuf was forcefully placed in polluted environments he remained healthy and wealthy and wise subhanallah and there's testimony to this because this surah is amazing the surah is amazing the beginning ties up to the end and the end ties up to the beginning at the end of surah yusuf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when they were united Yusuf alayhi salam said he proclaimed he proclaimed and said that indeed Allah was good to me when he removed me from the well and he brought you out of the desert after shaitan caused enmity between me and my brothers la ilaha illallah are you following here what did he say? This is when he's in his 50s. He's saying, Allah was good to me after shaitan caused hatred and enmity between me and my brothers. Who taught him this? Who taught him this? In pure English. Who taught him this? His father, Yaqub alayhi salam. Normally when you ask a question, you're supposed to? I don't know if you know this here. When you ask the question, you're supposed to? I can't hear you. You're supposed to answer. So who taught him this lesson? Yaqub alayhi salam. When? When he was a young boy in the house of Yaqub. Did Yaqub have access to Yusuf alayhi salam when he was 15 and 18 and 20 and 25 and 30 and 35 and 40 and 45 and 50? Did he have access to him? So when he immediately met his father, he exclaims, Allah was good to me when Allah took me out of the well and brought you out of the desert after shaitan caused enmity between me and my brothers. This is the first thing he tells his father. As if he's so excited to tell his father, my dear father, you know those lessons you told me when I was three and four and five and six and seven? Wallahi, I value them. And I made dua for you. And let me teach you some of the lessons or remind you some of the lessons you taught me subhanallah subhanallah you see what proactive parenting does my dear brothers and sisters and Yaqub alayhi salam knew that my son is going to go through difficulty and he's going to be tested so he went on to guide his child to guide his child and, and, and remember we discussed on, uh, on Sunday, we said that from good parenting is to command your child and after commanding them is to do what? To explain the command. Did we not say that? We said, command them and explain the command. And we gave examples from Luqman. Remember? From the story of Luqman. And uh, remember that? Tayyib. Yaqub alayhi salam does this as well here. Yaqub alayhi salam says, do not tell this dream to your brothers. But he explains himself. He goes, because they might plot against you. And then he guided his child because he knew, as we said earlier, that this child might become confused. That how come my father is telling me to hide things from my brothers? These are my protectors. Right? So Yaqub alayhi salam said, my dear son, if they do anything, it's not them. But it's who? Shaitan. Shaitan. And then Yaqub alayhi salam knew my time with my son is limited. Thus I must teach him from the university of life. So he turned to his son and said, Oh my dear son, وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِن تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ He said to his son, my dear son, understand from now, this lesson which is from the university of life, before we are separated, understand that you are going to go through difficulty. And whatever you go through, understand it's Allah's plan. This is how Allah is completing His favor upon you and teaching you prophecy and teaching you how to interpret dreams. And this is how He completed His favor upon the family of Yaqub. And this is how He completed His favor upon your forefathers, Ibrahim wa Ishaq. 
This is the university of life. He's telling him from experience. He's telling him from history that my dear son, Ibrahim alayhi salam, was told to take Ismail and Hajar to a barren land. He was also tested. My dear son, Ismail al- Ibrahim alayhi salam, was thrown into the fire. He was also tested. Don't forget how they were tested, my dear son. And remember, when you being tested, that Allah is completing His favor upon you, like how He completed His favors upon them. This is what Yusuf alayhi salam held steadfast to. When he was taken as a slave, when he was totally innocent, and sold in a house of shirk, when he was a person of tawheed, and a son of a prophet, who was a son of a prophet, who was a son of a prophet, who was the son of Khalilullah Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is what he held steadfast to. When they were loose between themselves and seduction and zina was rampant in that society, he never fell prey to it. He was a product of his core self. He wasn't a product of the nurture of the environment as the philosophers say. He was a product of his core self, of that which was nurtured by his own father, uh, Ya'qub alayhi salam. And then Ya'qub alayhi salam went to tell him. And remember, this is the lesson of what? The lesson of being a proactive father. Ya'qub alayhi salam went to tell him, to teach him about some of the qualities of Allah. And he chose to teach him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knowledgeable and the all-wise. He chose these two names and qualities to teach his son Yusuf alayhi salam at this young age. Why? So that Yusuf alayhi salam knows, he's telling his son, my dear son, when you are thrown into the bottom of a well, and your shirt is taken from you, and you are scared and think that nobody knows, understand that your Rabb is Alimun Hakim. Your Rabb is the all knowledgeable. He knows where you are, and he's the all wise. He knows why you're there. And my dear son, when you are taken as a slave, even though you're not a slave, you're the son of a prophet and free, and you think nobody knows, and you're so young, understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, inna rabbaka alimun hakim, Allah knows where you are, and Allah knows why you're there, he's hakim, he's all wise, and my dear son, when you are transported out of Palestine, and taken to Egypt, a totally foreign land, because Yaqub was based in Palestine, when you are transported out of your homeland, understand that don't think nobody knows where you are. Allah knows where you are and Allah knows why you are there. He's wise as to why you are there. And my dear son, when you are locked up in a room and nobody can see you and you are being called to adultery and zina and you think nobody knows, understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where you are and He knows why you're there. And my dear son, when you're thrown into prison, when you're totally innocent, and you think you all by yourself understand my dear son that Allah knows where you are and Allah is wise as to why you're there Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la he taught this young boy these lessons thus he grew up an upright person and he remembered these lessons throughout his life for when he was locked in the room with the minister's wife and she said or she called him to her what did he say? immediately he said Ma'adha Allah I seek protection from Allah. Immediately. Even though by now he had completed decades without hearing about Allah and hearing about Tawheed. But the first words that came to his mind when he was locked up there, Ma'adha Allah, I seek Allah's protection. When he was in the prison and he met the two inmates, he tells them, that I am on the way of my father and my forefathers. Who taught him that lesson, the way of his father and his forefathers? Yaqub alayhi salam, when? When he was a young seven-year-old boy. When he's in the prison and now he's over 40, he's telling the inmates, وَاتَّبَعْتُ مِلَّةَ آبَائِي I am upon the ways of my fathers. No identity crisis. Somebody would say a child like this, he would be suffering an identity crisis. He wouldn't know who he is. He's grown up in, with shirk around him, with no morals, no manners, no etiquettes around him. He should, have, he should be suffering an identity crisis. But in his 40s, he's proudly announcing that I didn't suffer an idolatry, uh, identity crisis. I know who I am. 
I am Yusuf, the son of Yaqub, who is a prophet, the son of Ishaq, who is a prophet, the son of Khalilullah Ibrahim alayhi salam. I am upon the way of my fathers. So this is the first lesson from the story of Yusuf. The, I've packaged it under the title A Cohesive Family. And we've discussed the first element of a cohesive family and that is the father or parent-child relationship. May Allah grant us the understanding. Wallahi, I can go on. I can go on. In fact, I think this is the only lesson we can share with one another. But I really have some more I want to share with you. So please bear with me. Please bear with me. I don't know when I'll be back with you all. The summary is we need to be active in our parents' life, in our children's lives. We need to be proactive in our children's lives. We need to be their heroes. When a child is asked, who's your hero? He should say, my dad. He should say, my dad. That's what you should say. Okay? Young boys and young girls. But remember that for them to say that, you have to earn it, my dear fathers and my dear mothers. Yaqub alayhi salam earned the right to be the hero of Yusuf alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us heroes to our children. And may Allah protect our children from vice and harm. Ameen. The second dimension to family cohesion is the child-parent relationship. And this is taught to us in many places in Surah Yusuf as well. Starting with the initial ayat that we recited where Yusuf alayhi salam said, Ya abati. Ya abati. Oh my dear father. This is a lesson to the children on how to address their parents with the most beautiful of terminologies, in the most softest of ways, in the most beautiful of ways. Oh my dear father. Ya abati. The softest way in the Arabic language to call out to your father and mother by adding the sta to the term ab or um. Ya abati. And this was, the sunnah, this was from the sunnah of the Anbiya. And on Sunday we discussed the relationship between Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. And they too addressed themselves with utmost respect. With utmost respect. Surah Yusuf also teaches us with regards to our parents that we should never use the truth against them whilst intending falsehood. We should never use the truth with them whilst we intend falsehood from the truth. Right? We're discussing now the dimension child, parent. First was parent, child. The first lesson from child, parent is speak to your parents with the most beautiful of words. Address them in the most beautiful of ways. The second lesson is never use something which is haqq with them with the intention of batil and falsehood. And we learn this from the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about them. And he says that they said قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا مَا لَكَ لَا تَأْمَنَّا عَلَى يُوسُفَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَنَاصِحُونَ أَرُسِلْهُ مَعَنَا غَدًا يَرْتَعْ وَيَلْعَبْ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ They went to their father when, now when they wanted to get rid of Yusuf they said, you know what, Yusuf is under our father's tight watch. We need to get Yusuf away from him. What did they do? They went to their father and said, Oh, our, uh, oh, our father, what is it with you that you don't trust us with Yusuf? Emotional blackmail. What is it with you that you don't trust us with Yusuf? And we are his sincere advisors. Send him with us. So that we can race with one another and play with one another and we will be his protectors. Yes, this is truth. This is truth. We his brothers, we his protectors. If you send him with us, we will play with him. Why is it that you don't send him with us? It's good for him to have exposure outside the home. It builds his confidence. Right? We have to send our children out. Don't keep them always next to you. 
right? It makes them mothers, babies, and so on and so forth. This is in effect what was happening. This is what was happening. So they were using truth, but they intended with it falsehood. And this is known as emotional blackmail. And Surah Yusuf teaches us that this is not what you should do with your parents. And this is haram, and this is disliked. The second lesson. The third lesson Surah Yusuf teaches us with regards to the child-parent relationship is that we should never ever make our parents worry. Never from being good to them is that we never even make them worry over us. If you tell them, father and mother, I'm coming home at 10 o'clock and you're stuck in traffic, which is, mashallah, something I think which a plausible excuse here in Sri Lanka. I think it's very difficult to make your appointments unless you are 40 minutes early for your appointment. <laughs> if you're stuck in traffic, don't just say, it's alright, I'll be five minutes late, they'll be okay. No. Call them and say, mom and dad, I told you I'm coming at 10, I'm stuck in traffic, I'll be home at 10.05, inshallah. Or maybe a few more minutes past that. This is from being good to your parents as taught to us in Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf teaches us that we from disrespecting our parents is even making them worry over us. Subhanallah. Where do we learn this? From Ya'qub alayhi salam speech to his child. Ya'qub alayhi salam said, Qala inni la yahzununi an tadhhabu bihi wa akhaf wa akhaf an ya'kulahu al-dhib wa antum anhu ghafinun Ya'qub said, you know what my children, it saddens me that you take him. Because I fear that a wolf might devour him. What did Ya'qub say? It saddens me that you take him. The scholars of Tafsir say, we deduce from this, that it's not allowed for you to make your parents sad. If they tell you this scares me, this saddens me, whether it makes sense to you or not, it's out of bir and goodness to your parents that you don't even do that which makes them sad and scared. Remember we said tadabbur, how we extract lessons from behind the ayat. The ayah is just telling us a story, what Yaqub said. But when we ponder over it, we deduce a lesson. That from being good and diligent with your parents, is not, you shouldn't even make them scared. If you're one minute late, call them. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, how beautiful the Qur'an is. Surah Yusuf also teaches us that we should look after our tongues always with our parents. Always, especially with our parents. But look, af look after our tongue always. Emotional blackmail is a big red X. Especially with our parents. Right? And we've discussed this from the ayat that we've taken. And we learn this also from other ayat in Surah Yusuf. For after they abducted Yusuf and tore his shirt away, they came home to their father at night with crocodile tears. See, this is from emotional back blackmail and deceiving your parents and cheating your parents. Surah Yusuf is teaching us we should never do this with them. Some children, mashallah, they professional criers. And we know, in fact, you know a two-year-old. Two-year-old is the best negotiator. A two-year-old is the best negotiator because they will in the shop in front of everybody jump on their back and their stomach and kick and bring the tears out and scream until you say okay okay I'll bite for you calm down <laughs> have we experienced that right right so they came to their parents they're not two-year-old children Two-year-old children are excused. They came to their parents with tears. Allah says, They came to their father in the evening crying. So their father said to them, or they said to their father, Oh, our father, we went racing with one another and we forgot about Yusuf and we left him with our, our uh, merchandise, with our belongings and a wolf ate him. And you know what? You will not believe us even if we're telling the truth. You see emotional blackmail? That's emotional blackmail. You will not believe us even if we're telling the truth. And then they presented the shirt to Yaqub alayhi salam to say, Look, the shirt has blood on it. This is what happened to it. But Yaqub alayhi salam knew that they were lying to him. But Yaqub alayhi salam was an amazing father. He had hikmah. He had wisdom. He knew 
when to say something and how to say something. Thus, he said, Nay, you have indeed formulated something and I will exercise a beautiful patience. So we learn from this that we should never lie to our parents. In terms of the parent or child-parent relationship, we said number one, talk to them beautifully. Number two, don't use emotional blackmail. Number three, don't deceive them. And from deceiving them is lying to them. Surah Yusuf teaches us that these are big X's. We should never have this in our relationship with our parents. It teaches us that the manner in which we behave with our parents will, will be the manner in which our children will behave with us. Allah Musta'ah. Surah Yusuf teaches us this as well. That what you plant, so shall you reap. If you act with your parents in a certain way, tomorrow you will have children. And fear that they will behave with you in that particular way. Because towards the end of Surah Yusuf, when Yaqub is a very old man and he keeps on talking about Yusuf alayhi salam, the grandchildren of Yaqub alayhi salam say to him, قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ إِنَّكَ لَفِي ضَلَالِكَ الْقَدِيمِ They say to him that by Allah, indeed you are in the same old era. Allahu al-musta'an. Allahu al-musta'an. You see what the grandchildren are saying now? The grand, these are the children of these brothers, these children who came home, the brothers of Yusuf, who came home and they lied to their father and they deceived their father and they used emotional blackmail against their father. These grandchildren, their children have adopted this ideology with the elders. They telling Yaqub alayhi salam that by Allah, you, when you do, he was talking about Yusuf, so they turned to him and said, by Allah, indeed you are in your old era. Disrespectful. Allahul Musta'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, at this particular juncture, I want, to, I want to coin a question. And that question is, what is our relationship with our parents? Right now, I want you to ask yourself, what is our relationship with our parents? Are we diligent children with our parents? Are our parents truly happy with us? Are there days in our parents' lives when they sit and they wish we would be different children to what we are? Ask yourself this question. Especially our mothers. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us about how the mother has a precedence in our lives over the father. And to make us understand this better, I want you to imagine a mother who writes a letter to her child. What do you think this mother would say in her letter? Would she not say, My dear son, a long time ago, I received the best news a mother can receive, a human being can receive. And that was the news when I was informed that I was pregnant with you. And my dear child, I cannot express how happy I was on that day. And weeks passed by after that. And my body started changing. And I was scared because I could not eat except that I would vomit what I ate. And I would feel weak. And my body started expanding as you grew in me. And my dear child, I promise you that with all the fear that I had, I was loving you more with every day that passed. Even though all this was happening to me, the day that I held you became even more dearer to me. And my dear child, those weeks became months. And I became even more heavier to such an extent where I couldn't stand for long. I couldn't walk for long. And then a time came when I couldn't even sleep on my back. Because of the weight of carrying you would cause immense pain on my chest. So I would sleep on my side. But I would fear when I would turn to my side that I might roll onto my stomach and harm you. That was a fear in my mind, my dear child. But I would try my best. And every day that passed, my love for you grew stronger. And my desire to hold you grew stronger. Until my dear child, a day came when I felt a pain that I never ever felt in my life before. 
a pain in which I thought I would die. Wallahi, I thought I was going to die. A pain which I would not wish that my enemy felt. And it was the day when you were about to enter this world. And it lasted for long. Pain after pain. Contraction after contraction. Second after second. Minute after minute. By Allah, it felt like a lifetime. I thought I wouldn't survive from this. But I promise you, my dear child, that there was never a moment, never a moment that I hated you during that process. Never a moment where I said an evil word to you. Or an evil word about you. Rather, my desire for you, my desire to hold you, my desire to see you, kept me going. That inshallah it's soon. That inshallah it's soon. And I carried on going. I never ever said that I will take revenge over you after you're born. I never ever said that woe to you. Woe to you. I never uttered a word of enmity and hatred towards you. As I suffered these pangs that felt like the pangs of death. And then my dear son, or my dear child, you entered this world. And when I saw you, the pangs of death that I thought I felt dissipated. And the tears that I had in my eyes became tears of joy. And the hurt that I felt in my body became a hurt of joy as I held you and brought you to my chest. And smiled and said, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Allah has blessed us with a great blessing. And then my dear child, it never stopped there. For the sleepless nights came after. Why sleepless nights, my dear child? Because I could not tolerate. I could not tolerate you crying one bit. I would be so tired from looking after you during the day. That when I finally got some sleep and you made one sound, it woke me up immediately because it would hurt me that you would be uncomfortable. So I got up and said, rather I be uncomfortable than you be uncomfortable. Allahu Akbar. This is what she probably would write. And I would pick you up and pat your back and make sure you fed and make sure the milk is at the right temperature so that you would experience utmost comfort. And then you grew up, my dear child. I saw you walking, and before that crawling. And then a day came which was difficult for me. And that was the day when I had to take you to school. And I held your hand, my dear child. And I took you to school. And you cried there. And I cried too. But I had to hold my tears because I knew it was good for you to be there. And I didn't want to make you upset that I was upset as well. So I held my emotions and left you there. And then my dear child, you grew in that school and you developed independence and you did things for yourself until a day came in your, in your life and in my life when I was so happy for you but I was extremely sad as well. And that was the day my dear child and my dear son when you were getting married. When you found someone to get married to. I was so happy for you when I saw your happiness. But I was so sad as well. Why? Because my dear child, those few things which I love doing for you, somebody else is going to do them for you now. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes we don't understand our mothers. When there's a problem between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, we, we don't give our mother the haqq. And say, she's just having difficulty dealing with the fact that she can't, she, she, she's no, she, she, I'm no more dependent on her cooking and her looking after me. That's it. She's just dealing with that. Sometimes we don't give our parents that haq and that due. And we say, what's wrong with you? Can't you be happy with me? I'm married now. Wal iyadu billah. Wal iyadu billah. Surah Yusuf teaches us, don't even do that which makes your parents sad. She says, my dear child, I was so happy for you. But I was so sad because somebody else is going to do what I love doing for you. Subhanallah. We would say that's a chore. They say, no, it's my happiness to wake up and make you breakfast and maybe wash your clothes and make your room and check that you're happy and ask you every now and again, my dear son, are you okay? How was your day? It's our happiness. It's not a chore for us. We, we wake up for it and we go to sleep for it. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. They gave birth to us at the end of the day, my dear brothers and fathers and mothers and sisters. This is what she would probably say. So in light of this letter, in light of this letter, my dear mothers and fathers, let us ask ourselves, 
What is our condition with our parents? Especially our mothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be towards being diligent with our parents after commanding us towards tawheed. We discussed this during our lecture about bonds of kinship. And Surah Yusuf from the lessons is how to be a diligent child. What is our condition with our parents? May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, when we discussed the bonds of kinship, we made a deal with each other. Remember? That you will go and make friends and make peace with those family members that you had some trouble with and turbulence with and might have been avoiding. And mashallah, many of you wrote to me and wallahi, it was the coolness of my eyes and heart that some of you called in and wrote in with tears and said, Subhanallah, you have apologized to people you haven't spoken to for months and maybe yes. And inshallah, this next Eid that's coming up, you will spend this Eid together. It was my happiness, Wallah, Wallah. And now we're discussing our parents. Thus, at this juncture, I want us to take a break right now. Because I'm not going to make a deal with you that you go home and call your parents. I want you to take out your mobile phones right now. Right now. In this particular venue, put your hands in your pocket and take out your phones. Uh, mashallah, I heard Sri Lankans listen to instructions very clearly. Walillahi alhamd. You don't have to repeat yourself when you instruct them. I want you to take out your phones right now. Let me see everybody with their mobile phones in their hand. Yes. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for me, not for yourself, for the sake of Allah, perhaps Allah will make this your Jannah. Perhaps Allah will smile upon you right now and tell his angels that this slave of mine, let him do what he wants today, for I have given him Jannah. I want you to take out your phones right now. And for those who are recording, switch off recording and do this task that I'm about to tell you to do right now. I want you to phone your parents. And I want you to tell them that you love them. And I want you to apologize for your mistakes in your lives with, rega in your lives with regards to their khidmah and their service as per the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's do this right now. Let's pick up our phones. I'm going to stop speaking for five minutes. So don't stare at me for the sake of Allah. Don't worry what the next person is going to say. I'm going to look bad by Allah. Do you want to look bad in front of Allah or do you want to look bad in front of people? Take, off, take out your mobile phones. Phone them, text them if, you, if they're far away, and if they've passed away, then make dua for them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes their grave a garden from the gardens of Jannah. Let's do that in the next five minutes. Jazakumullah khairan. For the sisters as well upstairs. And if your father is in the audience, get up and go to him and give him a hug and apologize for your mistakes. For indeed, we are all weak and we all make mistakes. Let's do that. Jazakumullah khairan. Perhaps the first person who does it, Allah will give him the greatest rewards because he will encourage the rest. Some people say it's not our culture to, by Allah forget your culture. For the sake of Allah do it. <clears throat> MashaAllah, tabarakallah. MashaAllah, may Allah accept from you. Yeah. May Allah accept from you. Islam is a way of life. Islam is a way of life. Alhamdulillah. And this is what it's about. We don't know whether the angel of death is counting our seconds right now next to us. Counting. And we pass away before we told our parents we love them. And we would have lost a great part of Jannah because of that. We know that a great part of our Jannah is set based on our relationship with our parents. 
For those parents who've passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their graves a garden from the gardens of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather, us, gather them with their children and loved ones underneath his arsh on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah grant them their books of deeds in their right hands. May Allah inspire the children they've left behind to do those worthy acts which Allah will use to reward those parents who've passed away after they've passed away. And may Allah gather us with our parents in the highest Jannah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, these tears that you have, Wallahi, I ask Allah to make these tears, tears that extinguish the fire of Jahannam. Because these are tears that are for nobody's sake but the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah bless you all. Ameen. So, we've discussed... Uh, um, We've discussed lesson number one and to be honest, I only intended to discuss with you two lessons from Surah Yusuf. Two lessons only because as you can see, we need a long time together and may Allah bring me to Sri Lanka just to teach the whole of Surah Yusuf. Inshallah, one day, one day, Ameen, Ameen. So the first lesson was family cohesion and we discussed two of the three entities and that was parent versus child and child versus parent the second lesson which I want to discuss with you is something which we have to discuss and that is because Surah Yusuf is the essence of this particular lesson we would have an incomplete session together if we didn't discuss this my dear brothers and sisters and that is the lesson of patience of sabr because this surah as I explained to you was revealed to the ummah as a means of ease to their difficulties and a means of ease to their sufferings and we see in the surah a father who was in patience for decades a beautiful patience as he says and a child who experienced a beautiful patience for decades as well my dear mothers and fathers my dear brothers and, sis and sisters this world is not the world of perpetual happiness and bliss for that world is known as Jannah and this world is not the world of perpetual doom and gloom and punishment for that world is known as Jahannam we are in a place in between a place that precedes that place a place which is the working ground before that place and for those who, who work diligently their abode will be perpetual happiness and for those who lack diligence may Allah protect the abode will be perpetual harm or if they pass away as Muslims then some form of cleansing in Jahannam before Jannah may Allah protect us all from even going near Jahannam Ameen this world that we in is the dunya and this world is the world of testing it's the world of testing I want you to understand this O servants of Allah and O children of Adam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us in this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا Allah says he is the one who created life and death to test you all and make manifest which one of you is best in deeds understand this O servants of Allah many of us think we are only being tested when we are experiencing some difficulty and this is incorrect my dear brothers and sisters for we are being tested as well when we enjoy financial standing and when we enjoy material well-being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us everything that we want Allah is also testing us then have we not come across the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانِ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعْعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا have we not seen where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that as for insan, when Allah tests him, tests him, when? When Allah gives him what he wants and blesses him with things in this dunya. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call it? 
a test. It's also a test. Allah is testing us in times of goodness and in times of difficulty. And that is why Sulaiman alayhi salam, who Allah gifted with the properties of the of this dunya, made the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subservient to him. The jinn, the birds, the wind. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That when he announces who can bring me the arsh of that person who prostrates to the sun there's a competition there's a competition some say we'll bring it to you before you stand up from the jinn we'll bring it to you before you stand up from your throne and then if reed stands up and says i will bring it to you before you blink and before you open your eyes when you blink <laughs> this is who sulaiman alayhi salam had at his mercy and what does he say? He says, this is from the blessings of Allah upon me. To test me. Will I be thankful or will I be ungrateful? Yes, we are being tested, my dear brothers and sisters, even when Allah gives us. Allah is testing us to see whether we will thank Him. Some people Allah tests and they don't say, Alhamdulillah. They don't say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana lihada. Wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. They don't say Allahumma lak alhamd kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhik wa azimi sultanik. They don't praise Allah. They don't thank Allah. They behave as if they are deserving of these gifts. This is a test. And Allah will also test us with adversity. We might have troublesome children. We might have a troublesome marriage. We might have problems in our job. We might have suffering because of the loss of a family member we might have difficulty because we are unable to get that which we like these are all tests these are all tests these are all tests but i give you glad tidings for the second lesson from surah yusuf i give you glad tidings O servants of allah and O children of adam and that is in these ayat in surah al-baqarah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَيَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقُصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَنَقُصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed you will be tested. It's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take peace in this. This is glad tidings to us. This is a means of ease for us. That when we are being tested, we know that it's not only us. Allah will test everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed you will be tested with fear, with hunger, with a lack of financial standing and material well-being, with life. Allahu Akbar. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those who pass his test. Like Ya'qub alayhi salam and like Yusuf alayhi salam, Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ and give glad tidings to the patient ones. This is what is for us, O servants of Allah. We remedy the test that Allah gives us with patience. And from being from the patient. And who are they, Ya Allah? Who are the patient ones? Ya Allah. Allah says, Alladheena idha asabathum musibah. Allah says, they are those that when Allah afflicts them with a test, qalu, they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. They say, indeed we are from Allah. And indeed we will return to Allah. They say, for Allah is what He gave. And for Allah is what He took. Allahu Akbar. These are those who pass the test. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? As their prize, as their gifts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ 
Allah says, for those is a special gift, a special prize from the Lord of the worlds, from the one who created them and gave them that test. Allah wanted to give us a reward from Him. But the only way to get that reward was for us to go through that test. So that test was not a punishment, rather it was a mercy. Allah says, Allah will give them salawat, greetings and salutations from Allah. A welcome from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wa rahma And special mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is only for those Who pass those tests And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And they are from the rightly guided Allah labels them the rightly guided by Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala labeled us the rightly guided on condition He removed our financial standing, material well-being, would we say no ya Allah? Would we say no ya Allah? We rather have our, material, our materialistic things. We would rather have peace in this temporary dunya over peace in the eternal akhirah. Would we say that? If Allah told you today, I guarantee you Jannah, on condition I test you with something that you love, will you say, Ya Allah, no? Would you say that? If Allah guaranteed you Jannah, would you think about it? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Allah titles you the rightly guided. Why? Because you're from Jannah. This is it, O servants of Allah. And this is it, O children of Adam. إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ أَحَدًا ibtala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, He will test you. For He tested His Anbiya alayhim as-salatu salam He tested Yusuf alayhi salam He tested Ya'qub alayhi salam He tested Ibrahim alayhi salam He tested Nuh alayhi salam He tested all His Anbiya. He tested Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you not read? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Alif la meem Ahasiba al-nasu an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun Allahu Akbar Have you not read where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Alif la meem Does mankind think that it is enough for them to say I believe in Allah? It is enough for them to say La ilaha illallah wa hum la yuftanun and Allah will never ever test them. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Allah says by Allah we tested those before them. I, Allah says by Allah, Allah has tested those before us. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا Thus Allah will make manifest which one from amongst us has truly believed when we said we believe. And Allah will make manifest who are the liars. Who, have, who say they believe but their hearts haven't believed. They complain about Allah. They deny Allah. They say, Ya Allah, why me? Ya Allah, why are you doing this to me? Ya Allah, I'm making dua and dua and you're not answering me. Ya Allah, until when are you going to do this to me? May Allah forgive us. May Allah protect us from this disbelief. Amin. 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 Those before us, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah shook the earth beneath them before He gave them assistance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ Do you think you will enter Jannah? وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And what about the parables and lessons and history of those before you? You think you will enter Jannah because of your behavior. What about those before you? They were afflicted with ba'sa, with adversity. And that which we consider harmful. And Allah caused the earth beneath them to shake. The earth beneath them to shake. Allah says we shook the earth beneath them. That is how we tested them. You think you're being tested? Allah says we tested those before you. The Anbiya. 
to such a great extent that the earth beneath them shook until a point when the Prophet and those who believe shouted out and said, when is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming? Until the Prophet himself and those who were with him said, when is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming? It is here, O servants of Allah, and it is here, O children of Adam, that the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, ala inna nasr Allahi qareeb. Allah says here, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close. Excellence is achieved on the verge of destruction. You want excellence? You got to be pushed to the verge till you feel you are about to fall off the cliff. That is where excellence is achieved. And when Allah pushes you to that extent and you pass, when a prophet takes a knife and puts it to the neck of his child, that is when the help of Allah comes. And he's given a ram to slaughter because he's passed the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. Do you see my dear brothers and sisters? This is the lesson from Surah Yusuf. Thus never ever deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become stronger believers. And every time you are tested, say Alhamdulillah and ask Allah to assist you through that test and ask Allah to make you from the rightly guided after that test and seek assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But never ever deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the understanding. Ameen. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made easy, O oh servants of Allah and O oh children of Adam, for me to discuss with you all today. And it is at this juncture that we say, Alhamdulillah, bi ni'matihi tatimmu salihat. That all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, it is with His blessings that goodness is completed. It's only Allah's tawfiq and guidance that goodness can become completed. It's not in my hands. It's not in your hands. When Allah wants to reward His slave with goodness, يُهَيِّئْ لَهُ الْأَسْبَابِ Allah inspires him to do those acts that are worthy of goodness and rewards. He inspires a group of people to write a letter to somebody and say, please come visit our country and run a series of talks. Allah inspires them to do that and inspires them to search far and wide for the resources so that that talk is possible. And when Allah wants to reward that speaker, He inspires him to agree to accept that particular invitation. And Allah makes the coming together a reality. And then when Allah wants to accept goodness from those in the vicinity that the speaker has come to, He inspires them to see the message that announces a particular program. And he inspires them to say yes and come. For there were many that saw the advert but were not inspired to come. Even though they had the ability to come. Thus understand it's tawfiq. It's tawfiq from Allah. If you thought that goodness is in my hands and yours, ask yourself how easy it is to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. How easy is it to say this but how many of us say it? Does it cost us anything? How many of us say it? But when we ask you, did you say it? What will you say? I forgot. Yes, you forgot. Because you are not inspired to say it. Thus seek forgiveness for those sins that are blocking you from being inspired to do goodness. O servants of Allah. May Allah forgive our sins. May Allah forgive our sins. And celebrating the hadith of the Prophet wasallam when he said, Man la yashkur an-nas. La yashkurullah That the one who doesn't thank the people Which is the lesser thanks Can never thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Which is the greater thanks In celebrating this hadith I want to thank The country Sri Lanka For allowing me peaceful entry And I would like to thank you all For lending me your attentive ear And I would like to thank everyone involved in making our programs together a reality and I would like to especially thank a group of young people headed by an uncle that's youthful as well from the bottom of my heart a team that I've now dubbed the investors 
Today we have many names like this. We have, as I hear from the youth, the expendables. Right? We have the expendables. Yeah, the youth are laughing. Right? Don't tell us who they are. Right? And we have the avengers. <laughs> so now we have the investors. I've dubbed this team the investors. And they're made up of a group of lovely people. May Allah bless them and make them a lighthouse for the other youth and inspire aspirations within the rest of the youth that they come together in goodness and become ignited communities that benefit humanity Ameen, Ameen I'd like to help uh, I would like to express a heartfelt gratitude to brother Sheham Ilham and Hafiz MashaAllah our brothers who are running the Sri Lankan hub and making sure that these lectures are being broadcasted I'd like to offer a heartful thanks as well to brother Rida and Sheikh Mu'iz who I'm sure you all know and love MashaAllah yes he's part of my team the investors and brother Adnan as well and our lovely brother Mas'ud may Allah bless him the son of uncle Azad, somebody who I've been worrying a lot on WhatsApp and on messages and on and using the phone, mashallah, but he's always answering and following through with the 101 requests. May Allah forgive me. May Allah forgive me. I'm always saying, make sure there's a fan and make sure there's an air conditioner and so on and so forth. And may Allah bless him. And may Allah bless Brother Abdullah and Sajjad and Nafis and Aman and Harun and Ayyub and Manasir. And last but not least, as I said, an uncle who's old in age but youthful at heart, Uncle Azad, who welcomed me with open hands and his wonderful smile and really, really, really looked after me in such a way that I will never ever think twice about coming back to Sri Lanka. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all, make all their dreams come true, give them better than they aspire and give them more in the akhirah. Ameen. O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us death whilst He's pleased with us. May He grant us a grave which is a garden from the gardens of Jannah. May He grant us shade underneath His arsh on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to drink from the hawd of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us our book of deeds in our right hands. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with our parents, with our spouses, with our siblings and all those who we love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised in rank. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Everything correct said is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is perfect and any mistakes are from myself and shaitan and I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. This marks the end of the title, Noble Pursuits. But it doesn't mean that we should stop our noble pursuits. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.